Welcome back to M-Hood Fishing, everybody. Those steps are making me feel my age today. I gotta sit down after coming up here. There's good reason for that. So I've been busy all week helping my hoarder, hoarder, that's right, I said hoarder friend, <sighs> move stuff out of one of his biggest buildings that is about to not be his building anymore. It's just a lot, a lot. He's a, officially a hoarder. Well, whew. So I've been doing that and I'm almost done with it. I did that today. I haven't fished for a few days. So I really, really want to fish today. We're going to go to the closest, easiest spot. It's not so far from the house. It doesn't take a lot of energy for me to get there. And I think we might be okay in that spot today looking for flatheads. This has been one of those days where the first half of it, where I was stuck somewhere else besides fishing, I was thinking, oh my goodness, we have the best conditions for flatheads because we had heavy overcast and some rough wind. We still have a bit of a high wind right now, but the overcast isn't so thick. Well, let's go see what's up with that spot. Hi, fish man. Yeah, you're right. Hi, fish man. What you gonna catch today? Fish. <laughs> you wanted to rub it in whose face? Hey, Lauren, I'm on the fish man's video now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Looks like we have a bit of a cameo rivalry going with those girls, eh? Let's get over here and get some fish. So here we are, the spot that I was at in the last video. Now, a lot of you guys know, but some of you might not know, this is one of my favorite close spots to where I stay when I don't feel good or I don't have a lot of time to fish. This is where I might go. There's a few others, but this is one of my favorite ones. Now, in the last video, it didn't do so well here. And as you can see, I have these conditions here. It's kind of cloudy. It was much thicker for most of the day. It just recently cleared up. It might cloud up again, but we are here, as you can see where the sun is in the afternoon, late afternoon. We're here around 5, 20, 5, 30, something like that look at the phone later but that's about where we're at here and sunset is going to be around 6 30 so we have an hour and 20 minutes maybe to fish should be able to do something here we will look for blues we will look for flatheads we will look for white bass <laughs> yeah you're right let's get into it i did not bring any kind of bait this time we're going to catch the bait with this little net this four footer net is perfect for this site the reason why <clears throat> i would like it to cloud up or at least stay cloud up for all day is because when you have overcast very thick overcast situations and you're going after flathead and even white bass as well because both those fish are more nocturnal than anything but under really low light conditions especially if it's kind of rough with flatheads if you got a rough wind out there under low light conditions those fish will become active earlier rather than later and in some cases you can do all right on them even at solar noon in some cases let's see if there's any bait here it might be some here i mean it's not out of the question oh yeah we got some bait look at that first cast of the net what do we pick up looks like we just got us some mullet so we're going to start with cut bait right away we're going to turn this into a small piece of bait Ooh, yeah you're right small piece of bait as you see i've cut most of the gut pocket off and here we got a one knot we're gonna fish this on a drop shot rig with a little bit of a homemade weight here this is probably an ounce and a half guessing you see i've only got about six to eight inches underneath the hook i really don't want more than eight six is usually what i like to get so now we're going to just run this through the top and there you go right through the top i'm gonna do a relatively short cast at this spot that may be a little longer than what i usually do but about 30 feet this is a snaggy spot but around 20 or 30 feet from where i'm standing less snaggy 
I'm gonna spend a little more time trying to get bait. I don't need any more cut bait at the moment, but what I really need is some live shad. I wanna put them under a slip cork. What do you guys think is going on here, huh? Oh, come on, man. The fish won't even let me get it out of the crack. What the? Dang. That was actually fast. We did a couple of empty casts. There's just no shad here yet. But there's something out here, huh? Yeah, I think so. Whoa. Nice. Let's reorientate my angle here because he's trying to go into rebarb town. So I'm using a Berkeley fusion rod. It's a really cheap, medium heavy rod that I got from Walmart. Less than 20 bucks, I think. And I'm using 30 pound test on it. Oh, he's running over here now. Whoa, this fish. Can't do anything with this fish. Oh, yes, guys. Oh, I had you guys staring at the sun. Are you blind now? Sorry about that. Look what we got on a piece of fresh cut bait. Exactly what I came here to get. It's a nice little flathead. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna bother weighing this one. He's probably about three pounds, maybe four. Nice, nice. You can do pretty good sometimes getting flathead on the freshest cut bait, like mullet. It works sometimes. All right, we're gonna let this one go. Man, my back pain is about melted now. I'm excited. Whoa -ho -ho. All right, guys, I'm just having no luck getting shad right now, but that's probably gonna change as we go through this session. But just to get another line out, we're going to put underneath the cork, underneath the slip cork at a depth of about four feet with a one knot, we're going to put a piece of cut bait. And we're gonna throw it over here where I've been throwing it to the side, there is an I-beam in the water. I don't know if you can see it, but past that I-beam is a nice little drop off. It's only around seven or eight feet deep. We might be able to get a catfish over there, flathead or blue cat, anything really. We want to bring this bait up to the I-beam. Sometimes the current will do it on its own. And we're gonna have that bait just suspended right at the I-beam because there's this huge concrete pad before the I-beam and there's a space underneath it. I believe there's a space and fish get up under there. So we're trying, we're going to try and coax a fish out from under that pad. Oh, 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 Let's put this rod down and take care of this. I was putting my cork back in a place. I was repositioning that slip float. Oh, man, this fish must have went up into something because now we're into a snag. I've walked down the bank to see if I could free the fish and it's still a pretty solid snag. I think that fish is up underneath something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk back to my spot, put the rod back in the crack and just wait to see if the fish will come out because sometimes that works. Oh, I think he's out. He's out. I just did. Well, he's pulling, but man, he's still... See that? Let's give him some slack. Maybe he'll work his way out. He must have me wrapped around something. I've been trying to unwrap this fish for over 20 minutes now. I've physically tried i've just sat it and wait and watched him tug then i checked to see if he's free he must have that line wrapped around something like rebarb or some or he's he's gone inside some structure so we're just going to gently pull back get to the line we might end up pulling him out of here but i doubt it i think we're we're just going to end up doing a sacrifice oh no 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 Something just freed up. What's what's going on here? Hey, 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 hey. All right, guys. 
So I'm back at the house in the yard with the dogs shooting this outro over again. I accidentally shot the rest of this video in time lapse mode somehow. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. So yeah, I lost that fish in the structure. I did get my stuff back though. When when I have really good overcast conditions, especially with a light chop like I did today, I always want to go look for flathead catfish, especially at that spot. It's just the time to do it. It beats having to sit out there all night long looking for a flathead. Sometimes I have the time to do that. Other times I don't. So when remember, when you have conditions like this, overcast, a light chop, and you can go fish around structure, you're probably going to do good on flathead. It beats beating out there all night. And that's what happened today. Sometimes it's better, but it happened like I thought it would. So remember that. Overcast light chop flathead are going to be active during the day or earlier than you would normally catch them so like share comment subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you next time